classical resources that's why i choose this topic so first of all west asia or middle east is at the crossroads of the three continents example asia africa and europe it has a strategic and significant place in geographically india connections with the west asia or middle east are probably older than those with the other region in the world these contacts were not always war like but also friendly there was a free exchange of trade and culture philosophical thought scientific ideas between india and west uh, asian civilization because here we can see two important human civilization developed one in nile valley in egypt another one in tigris and euphrates river valley in iraq or mesopotamia area the arabs played a prominent part in the commerce between east and west even before the advent of islam a large number of arabs had settled on the indian malabar coast there was a regular exchanges ideas it's almost all branches of knowledge including philosophy medicines mathematics and other areas between india and west asia indian merchant scholars and middlemen received great honor in the court of baghdad iran arabia as well as in indian mughal courts somewhere in deccani administrative setups the exchange of ideas between arabia and india received further inputs in the 7th century after the formation of islamic religion in arabia history gives a glimpse of the vast movement of men at this time prisoners of war recruits in the various armies especially indian archers in persian armies they are all very excelled deserters who roamed about from place to place during war period craftsmen metal workers ivory workers shipwrights caravans silk weavers jewelers like that so many artisan classes moving from one reason to another reasons scientific ideals also spread along with these irrespective movements of caravans and ships because so many traders carry our ideas to the arab countries as well as from arab countries to the east the arabs describing the indian decimal system called the indian art because it's very important area where indian intellectual influence on the arabs in conclusion that not a single aspect of arab culture civilization has escaped the influence of india whether it was a science art literature philosophy or religion the origin of indian culture indian cultural contacts with the arab world predates even the genesis and spread of islam this reason this is a commonly held view that from about 2005 years ago the land of india and west asia had traded regularly with the each other that is the origin was linked to the flourishing trade of the southern coast dominated by the arab traders india was a fulcrum of world trade and a meeting point of western and eastern trade routes and it is in the context of this great traffic of people of and ideas that we find the first appearance of the cultural contact during this period 
cultural contacts interactions of course had made headway in this more liberal ambience of trade from this side the trade contributed to the embedding of all local cultures hey, no, no, no. in a no, given no, no, no. culture from framework of interactions a systematic interlinking trading networks between east and west had been established with india playing a pivotal role in these systems india played a crucial role within afro asian led global economy for many centuries before vasco da gama set up in those areas over the many centuries this land had been the military part of many cultures from rome china arabia etc they made great voyages to india southern and western coast in search of spice india had observed the best of all these influences and remained in a perfect repository of all divine cultures for long centuries indian maritime regions were more plural in their population in terms of ethnicity religion and culture the societies were all extensively connected to wide range of trade culture and politics give and take nature of the cultures was the norm of the society this pluralism ideas openness to the innovations and new ideas for example mapilla communities and arabic malayalam languages were the other imprints of cultural contacts even for mughal urdu traditions in north india and deccani hindu islamic cultures in south india were the best examples of cross cultural religion and society in india the other alien elements such as jews and persians had also found their respective places the arrival of jews predates even the birth of christ the jewish community had made many contributions in the economic and social cultural arena of their surroundings india's global trade was also significantly enabled by the jewish merchants india of course has a long christian tradition older than the european one the syrian christian community of kerala had also had been the indigenous and incorporated into the liberal social political system spurred by the trade the arabs persians turkish corrections reinforced in the indigenous commercial base of hindus and jews the traded missions had exported some cultural goods from india imported something from from new from their land and kept their alive cultural affinities within the indigenous communities in northern india overland migrants who came primarily from southern regions of central and west asia had generated multicultural centers of social change mostly it's and around the urban centers with new local dynamism and new kind of culture complex emerged people who migrated from west asian region they brought with the skills and traditions of urban civilizations of the west asia examples imprints upon the monumental architectures of cities across india in even in north india as well as in south indian cities the exchanges between india and west asia had been going on for centuries each creating and borrowing from each other thus in the ancient as well as in the medieval period india and west asia were in the recipient of each other's knowledge and culture after the establishment of the islamic religion in arabia after the first established kingdom of islamic community umayyads they were ruled west asia from 570 to 750 ad after that 
Abbasid dynasty established in East Asia. They ruled 750 to 1258 AD. In the time of Caliph Al Mamun, the real scientific age of Arabs began. His son Mamun Al Rashid, liberal patronage, arrested the advancement of science along with all branches of learning. The great translations bureaus, Baitul Ikma, had already been established under the Harun Al Rashid, where learned scholars, translators of all nationalities, religions were employed for rendering books on scientific subjects into Arabic. The writings of the ancients were collected from all countries, regardless caste, and translators were paid the weight of the books in gold. Among the translators were two well-known Indian scholars, namely Manka and Ibn Dahan, who render valuable service for translating Indian scientific works into Arabic. Moreover, with the help of Indian scientists, astronomical observations were established in 1803 at Baghdad and Damascus, which produced real works on astronomical and geographical subjects. And it was Indian astronomy which flourished at the court of Baghdad. It was the growing need for accurate observations of the moon and the direction of the prayer that made the Arab Muslims interested in astronomy. And within a short span of time, they equipped themselves with the knowledge of astronomy, geography by studying scientific works of the ancients. But what was the borrowed from India was more important and conclusive. Muhammad bin Musa al Khwazim, Khwarazami, at the instance of Khalifa, prepared the abridgment of Sindh Hind and translated Brahma Gupta's Siddhanta. Subsequently, Yaqub bin Tariq incorporated in his Tariq al Aflaq principles of Indian astronomy. A little later, Aryabhata's and Varahamitra's works on astronomy were also studied and incorporated into the Arab scientific literature. The Arabs observed, diligently designed a new instruments and displayed more practical activities than did the Greeks. The Baghdad school represented the Indian scientific approach and spirit. After the decline of Baghdad in the 10th century, many works of Indian astronomers, geographers, centered around the Buwaid courts in Persia. In the same period, Saidul Andalusia, a Toledan astronomer and historian of science for his Kitab by Tabakat Luma, the books on categories of nations, borrowed material from Indian scientific works. But the second half of the 11th century AD is significant in the history of mankind as a period of great intellectual renaissance in Arabia and Persia. In the advent of all aspects of astronomy, a great intellectual resonance in Arabia and Persia taken place. Stand out the dominating figures of Abu Rahim Muhammad Ibn Azman al Biruni, who was one of the very greatest scientists of Islam. Once he wrote, I do not scorn to accept the truth from whatever source I can find. Having command over the Sanskrit language, he exploited best sources of Indian scientific including mathematics, astronomy, chronology, and everything. So, prominently important Hindu treatise translated to Arabic during this period. Indian literature at first translated into Persian was translated from Persian into Arabic. The most examples of which Panchatantra, which was rendering into Arabic by Ibn I Mukafa, a number of standard Hindu treatises on medicine, astronomy, mathematics were translated into Arabic by the order of the Abbasid Caliphs. These include such famous works as the Charaka, Susruta, Nidana, and the Astanga of Vagabata. The Charaka was translated by the Abdul Sanna Fali, while the name of translator of the Susruta Charaka was translated by Ali. Harun al Rashid, famous ruler of Abbasid dynasty, when he was a severe illness and was appointed by the grateful Khalifa, 
the head of the royal hospital among other visitors to baghdad opposite baghdad reference should be made to sabia son of bala a pgsn recruit the ibrahim cousin of the khalifa dan who was employed in the barmukad hospital of baghdad was a translator of indian signs into arabic shanuk or chanukya who was the author of a number of treatises on poison astronomy morals and veterinary sciences so like that after the rise of so many intellectuals in uh, baghdad when harun al rashid fell ill and could not be cured by his physician one abu humar recommended to the caliph the name of manka a reputed physician of india caliph invited the physician manka to baghdad he successfully cured the caliph such incident turned the attention of the intellectuals of baghdad and their patterns towards the indian sciences and stimulated in them in the desire to collect the indian works on various sciences and make further research into them with this object yahya bin khalid barmu the famous abbasid wazir deputed a man to go to india and bring information about the indian drugs arabs and religion matters the barmukid wazir took keen interest in the indian affairs and invited a number of indian scholars to the baghdad and engaged them in the translation of sanskrit works into arabic thus within a short time a large number of sanskrit works were translated into arabic and the knowledge gathered from the sources found ways into the arabic works on india several names of the indian physicians who had been invited by the court of baghdad and were employed in the state hospitals or in the department of translations these physicians were bala manka kalbarkal sindabad mankasan sale ibnadan with this help of these and other arab scholars numerous sanskrit works on indian medicines were translated into arabic ens numerous books written on various subjects like history geography religion scientific and literature certain valuable historical materials and medicines on india so like that several travelers wrote a diaries about india very best example suleiman the merchant he was a merchant who undertook several voyages from siraf in persian gulf to the china rounding the whole coast of india in connection with his trade abdul jaid siraf another one he visited several southern coastal city during his travel ibn batuta a more scholar theologian adventurer visited india in 1333 to 34 he traveled india extensively and had served several posts under sultan mahmud of tughlaq dynasty in delhi like that so many travelers wrote about indian social and religious and administrative conditions in their travel apps astronomy it was one of the first indian science to be introduced at the court of caliph al mansur one of the members of the deputation from sindh who now for his knowledge of astronomy and mathematics presented a copy of surah siddhant uh, it was a translated into sir, arabic sir. by ibrahim al fazari the court mathematicians of caliph al mansur the Ahmed, arabic can i person just please mute your phone laid 37 arab scientists its valuable source of knowledge on astronomy and mathematics impressed them of the intellectual please mute, mute your phone wallets of the indian 
the work came to be known in arabic as sind hind other important indian works on astronomy include for brahma guptas kandaka dyaka and arabatiya by the arabat of kasmapura the arabic translations were called can i sir please mute your phone hello please mute your phone the arabic translations were called ararkand arjambad arjaba respectively even before the translation of ptolemy's almagest in arabic these indians works on astronomy were rendered into arabic the above scientific works gave philip to the astronomical studies in baghdad many arab astronomers studied the indian works and added their own contributions to the subject one of them was ibrahim bin abib al fazari who wrote kitab al ziz on the basis of siddhanta on the basis of the al fazari's work muhammad bin musa al khwarizmi prepared the astronomical tables he also made another contributions al sindin al saki another treatise al sindin based on the siddhanta was compiled by other astronomer abash abdullah al marwazi the arab astronomers continued to take interest in indian works with the result that india came to be held in high esteem among the arabs there were continuous arabo indian contacts in the scientific and cultural fields al biruni who invited visited india during the 11th century studied the subject and started at several sanskrit works on astronomy into arabic al biruni states that the science of astronomy was a popular among indian because the affairs of the religions are in various way connected with it if a man wants to gain the title of astronomy he must not only know the scientific or mathematical astronomy but also astrology mathematics also one of the important contributions of india to the arab civilization the arabs borrowed extensive as well as the intensive knowledge of mathematics from india in as much as they named the discipline as indisha the mathematical engineering is called arabic a mahandis or expert in mathematics apparently derived from the indisha the arab writers translated many important indian works on algebra in the 8th century one of the greatest tools of civilization is the sign of zero the foundation stone on which all mathematical rest it is a certainly an indian invention the arabs borrowed the decimal system from india and revolutionized the mathematics they introduced it in europe in the 12th century ad in the field of algebra and trigonometry indians were pioneer from whom the arabs borrowed their knowledge mahmud ibn ay zubir al batani studied the indian use of mathematical system the science was also introduced to the arabs towards the end of the 8th to 10th century among the indian pandits who came to the court of caliph almanu was one mankan or kankan ibn nadim calls him manka al hindi most probably this pandit presented to the court the mathematical works brahmasputi a siddhanta by brahmagupta it was a translated into arabic by the order of the caliph both by al fazari and yaqub bin tariq in the reign of al mamun the math- mathematicians al khwarizmi adapted the indian numerals to arabic orthography it states that arabic signs this were slow in the beginning to the adopt this indigenous invention of indians for as late as in the 11th century a scientific like abu bakr mohammed al qarizi wrote the numer numbers in words in his al kafi fil isab however ahmad al nasawi in his work al mukni fil al isab al hind and several arab scientists had started using the indian numerals several other books were written on the subjects ibn nadim under the heading sindhi script has set down these numerals as described the method of writing numbers up to 1000 mathematical and astronomical terms were borrowed into arabic from sanskrit example kardaza derived from the sanskrit word karmazia was earlier used later on the arabic equivalent pitar mustavi was coined again words like zib or mast budmasha 
like that so many sanskrit words adopted by the arabic scholars though arabs were dazzled by greek learning indians mathematics left more lasting impression on them another important field adopted by the arabs from the indian was medicines the arabs also inducted into india for the medical sciences alkindis account of india was partly based on the report of the nwa sent by ahe bin barmaki to india to procure indian medicines and to study the indian religion and customs it is reported that even during the time of prophet an arab physician by the name al harith had visited india and learned the medical lore and was practiced at the persian academy of jundishpur an arab physician ibn tunuki visited india in the 9th century to study the medicines the caliph arun al rashid during one of his illness could not be cured by the arab physicians of baghdad and it was reported that an indian physician cured him this induced the caliph to patronize more indian medicines and to encourage the translations of sanskrit medical books into arabic the indian physician was later appointed as superintendent to their hospitals he translated several sanskrit books into arabic or persian another indian physician ibn dan was called by called to baghdad by yahya bin khalid barmuki and was appointed as the director of hospitals in baghdad among other indian physicians of baghdad was salil the son of descendant of the famous physician bela he treated and cured ibrahim a cousin of caliph arun al rashid when the farmer was declared dead by the royal physicians who was an expert in greek medicines such indigenous added to the popularity of the indian medicines in the early abbasid period it is interesting to note that indian medicines and herbs were known to the arabs from very early times the arab traders handled the drugs and spices trade with india and the persia a few medical books had been translated in arabic from greek and syriac during the humayd reign however during the abbasid period this activity got an impetus and many sanskrit medical books were translated into arabic a few of them were charaka susruta astankar naidin sistanga kitab al suman the book of poisons ibn al al nadims records the names of few indian physicians kanka or kanakeana susruta shanag or chanakya and jodar who translated sanskrit works into arabic some of their important work are as follows susruta in his work kitab e susruta consisting of 10 chapters giving full account of the symptoms of the disease their treatment and the medicines to be prescribed in the heat disease the work of charaka known as kitab hi charaka was first translated into persian and later into arabic by abdullah bin hali yakubi mention book nidan or nidana which discuss the problems and methods of giving correct diagnosis of each of the 404 disease but does not mention the treatment another indian medical book translated by ibn dan is entitled ashtanga hrudaya by ibn nadim a work on gynecology kitabi rusa fil alazat unnisa by an indian woman physician by name rusa was also rendered into arabic many other translations dealing on topics of the snake and other treatment drugs intoxicants medicinal herbs methods of identifying medicinal substances causes and treatment of various diseases were rendered into arabic thus by the middle of the 9th century most of the important greek and indian medical works available to the arabs but the arabs were also influenced by greek medical system system it also succeeds in influencing the persian medical works in india in the later centuries ibn abi usabia in his oyan al anbiya fi taqaqat al tiba gives a detailed information about the indian doctors of the abbasid courts and their influence on the arabic medical practitioners another important aspects the cultural exchanges between india and arabs the arabs influence spread the further and became more established with the sindh was conquered in 712 ad 
during the reign of Umayyad Caliph Walid bin Al Malik. Whatever may be the causes of the Arab invasion of Sin, its occupation, it went a long way in strengthening the cultural relations between the two peoples. There was, however, a vital difference in the way in which Islam spread from these two bases, that is, in Malabar and Sind. The spread of Islam in South, as mentioned earlier, was due to the peaceful and friendly manner in which the Arab traders conducted themselves, whereas it spread in Sind and Northern India was due to the expansion of the political power. The historical cultural exchanges between the Arabs and the people of India may be divided into two important periods, Umayyad period as well as the Abbasid period. During the Umayyad Caliphate, the Arabs were slowly setting acquainted with Indian literature treasures, but as the capital Damascus was situated close to the West, they were largely impressed by the Greek, Roman, and Hebrew thought and literature. When Abbasid's empire was established at Baghdad, founded in the middle of the 8th century, direct and close cultural relations were established between Indians and the Arabs. Under the Abbasids, Baghdad became the capital of the caliphate and the witnessed the unprecedented activity in all branches of knowledge. The reign of Caliph Al-Mansur between 754 to 775 opened a new chapter in the cultural relations of the two countries. Caliph Al-Mansur, zeal for learning, attracted many Indian pundits to the Abbasid court. The memorable deputation of the intellectuals of Sindh to the court of the Caliph in 1771 AD may be regarded as the first intellectual contact between India and the Arabs. Thus, during the later half of the 8th century and first half of the 9th century, many, many Indian scientists, physicians, Philosophers visited Baghdad, the seat of Abbasid Caliphate, and came in contact with the Arab scholars and Arab scientists. When the Burmesid family attained the high position of premiership at Baghdad, they strengthened the interchange of thought and culture between the two peoples. Yahya, the Burmesid Prime Minister of Al Mansur, invited many Indian scientists and scholars to Baghdad gave them all facilities to work. They were all elevated to high positions. The Barmacids were of a Buddhist descent, and the term Barmuk is the Arabianized form of Sanskrit word Pramukha, meaning the presiding officers of the Buddhist Viharas in Balak area. And then their interest of the Indian science was quite genuine and real. Consequently, many Indian scholars came into close contact with the Arab world. These scholars and scientists composed for the Khalifa several treatises on mathematics, astronomy, astrology, medicines, literature, and ethics. The following in brief for Indian contribution in different science for the Arabs. So from other accounts available regarding the Sanskrit literature, it seems that Arabs were less interested in compared to India's scientific literature in the opinion of Makbul Ahmad. The reason why probably was that the Arabic literature had advanced considerably both in prose and poetry and had acquired a definite form and style of its own. Greek literature also did not attract much attention except works of Aristotle and theory and concept of literary criticisms. A few Indian literature works also got currency into the Arab world through their translation. Panchatantra was translated from Old Persian version to Arabic by Makafa, and it's known by title Kalila Wa Dima. The two main characters of Panchatantra, few books could have attained a great success as Panchatantra has done. It has been translated into Arabic so many languages from Arabic, even in later terms, it was translated both in Persian and in Turkish. The stories of Panchatantra have been translated almost every European language, including Islandic. Another book mentioned by Al Masudi is entitled Kitab al Sindabad or the tale of seven ministers, the master, a youth, and a Rani. The tale of Sindabad is unusually incorporated into the famous Arabian Nights. Among the Hindu religion epics, parts of Mahabharata were rendered into Arabic by Abu Salia bin Suyab and later by Abdul Hassan al Zibali. Al Masudi mentions Kitab al Ara wal Adhyamadi 
Al Hind, which seems to have been the earliest study of the Indian society. Similarly, the works on the life and teachings of Buddha mentioned by Ibn Nadim were translated from Pahlavi to Arabic language. Books like Kitab Al Buddha, Kitab Bud Safa, Mufrad, and Kitab Balwa Wa Bud Safa were current at the time. Among the other Sanskrit works translated into Arabic were the ethical writings of Kanikya and the Itopadesha and the works ranging from logic to magic and these have been catalogued by Ibn Nadim in his Farista. The interest of the Arabs in India was not merely restricted to translations of their sciences and literature. They wanted to learn and know about Indian first hand hence there were many travelers who visited India and have left very useful information in their travel apps about the conditions, social and cultural Indian continent. They have given their interest about several regions of India. Few of them may be briefly noted. Very importantly, Suleiman, the merchant during the ninth century. Suleiman Tazari was one of the first known Arab traveler to visit India about 851 AD. His diary of travel, Silsilat Tawarik was published in Persia in 1845. In this book, Suleiman has described the Indian Ocean, which he refers to as the Sea of Irgun and the Isla Islands in the sea. He has also given a brief account of the Indian kings who ruled the coastal regions of West and South India. He says that Rajas of this land have a great regard for the Arabs and their countries called Konkan or Konkan. He also wrote about the laws and customs of the land. He says that the deeds are cremated and their wives are burnt alive with them. He also describes the food habit of the people. He says there are many kinds of fruit trees but not the date form. There is also a fruit which is not known in Arabic. He also prizes Indian proficiency in the medicine, astronomy and philosophy. Another important personality, Al Masudi, Abdul Hassan, was a historian geographer and voluminous writer. Among his works, two historical books are extant. They are Kitabu Tanavi Wal Asraf and Al Muraz. He wrote about the rivers of India in minute detail. He also wrote about the Muslim history and history of the other peoples. He wrote about his travels in his books, Mirazu Al Dahab, which was published along with its French translation in nine volumes in Paris. The books gives important information about different regions of the India, mainly the Western and Central India. He noted distance between Indian towns. He visited, gave proper locations and sites of the places. Another important personality, Abu Jaid Hassan Al Sairafi. He is one of the other Arab traveler who visited India and China on business. I am the first man, he claims, who has discovered that the sea which washes the coast of India and China, carving on its upper side, allows a, allows a route to the Mediterranean Sea. Like Suleiman, Tazari gives the description of the Rajas of India and their customs. He showed lit interest in Buddhist monks and their movements from town to town. He also informs us how Buddhism spread India to China. By the 10th century AD, large communities of Arab merchants had settled down along the coastal regions of the India according to Al Masudi. Thousands of Arabs had settled in Chawal, the other towns of Konkan region of Maharashtra, which was governed by Rashtrakutas of the Deccan, whom the earlier Arab merchants generally refers Al Balar, possibly the Arabized form of Vallabharai, meaning the beloved king. These rulers had a trade relation especially with the Arabs. The Arab stories of this period are all full of praise for these rulers who had shown a lot of interest in Arab merchants. These merchants had formed small communities and groups of their own and some of them had acquired the rights of managing their own affairs. They were all allowed to appoint their own Qadis to settle their disputes and build their mosques. They lived as peaceful citizens and married the local peoples. The children of such marriage were known among the Arabs as Bayasira or Nawaitas, the new settlers. So another uh, writer, Al-Istakari, 
Ibn Akal were Arab geographers who visited India during the 10th century. Ali Stakari wrote two books on geography entitled Kitabul Aklim and Masalikul Mamali. Ibn Akul was the first Arab geographer who tried to give a correct idea of the length and breadth of the subcontinent. He made maps of many countries, including that of Sindh. His information about the towns of Mansura and Multan ruled by the Muslim kings is very interesting. It shows how the different sections of the society lived peacefully and amicably. Al-Biruni, Abdul Rayyan Al-Biruni, was the famous philosopher and mathematician of the Khwarazam, who visited India in the early decades of the 11th century AD. Before coming to India, he had attained profound knowledge of Greek, Roman, and ancient Indian sciences. His curiosity to acquire knowledge of the science and culture of the other nations, and especially Indian culture, which was so different from his own, drove him to India. Alberini's approach to the study of Indian science and culture was comparative with Greek science. He studied and learned the Sanskrit language and then outlined in detail the basis and the main principles of Indian sciences. He observed that the Hindus have not succeeded in rationalizing their sciences to bring them to perfection as the Greeks have made. He comments on the Hindu religion and regards it as the form of monotheism. He was critical of the caste systems among the Hindus. Alberini's greatest achievement was his role as an academic interpreter between the Hindus and the Arab scholars. In the words of Sachu, his work was a translator, was a double one. He translated from Sanskrit into Arabic and from Arabic to Sanskrit. He wants to give Muslim an opportunity to study the science of India. On the other hand, he feels called upon to spread Arabic learning among Hindus. He thus presented India's ancient cultural and scientific works to the Arab world in the form of his monumental work entitled Takikat Mali Hai Hind. He was the first to translate Patanjali and Sankhya into Arabic. He wrote on the Sanskrit language and Indian dialects and the multiplicity of their vocabulary. Sachos enumerates as many as 22 works of Alberuni on Indian subjects like astronomy, medicines, mathematics, etc. Some of the important works are al Kanun, Al-Masudi, and Al-Latar, Al-Bakai. The language used by the Al-Burin is more akin to Sindhi than to any other languages of India. The above work was composed during the period of Muhammad Ghazana and son Masood. So, the most of Muslim travelers of the later period of 14th century was Ibn Battuta a Moroccan religious scholar born in Tangier in 1304. He set out on a pilgrimage to Mecca. He journeyed to North and East Africa, Middle East, Southeast Asia, India, China, like that. He was one of the greatest travelers of history. He travels covered about 77,640 miles, of which more than 14,300 miles were covered in course of his travels through India, the medieval island and Ceylon. He came to Morocco in 1345, wrote a Tafutul Nazarfi Garib. Ibn Battuta account cannot be compared to Alberin's work in its comprehensive needs and scientific approach. However, the account of his colorful and provide useful portrait life of the period. So, like that, many Arab travelers and geographers wrote about India. Yakubi. The famous Arab historians refers to Indian achievements in these words. The Indians are men of science and thought. They surpass all other peoples in every science. Their judgment, astronomical problems is that. In the science of medicines, their ideas are highly advanced and a large number of books which deal with their principles. And they have a large number of other books which are too many mentioned. Quoted by Yakubi. India's greatest contribution to the Arab civilization was the introduction of technical knowledge and scientific ideas to the East Asian countries. Arabs achievement remarkable progress in maritime trade, knowledge of geography, chemistry of their virtue of Indian astronomy and uh, mathematics. They had a division of eclipse into two 27-28 parts suggested by evidently by the moon period in the days. And it was uh, certainly borrowed by the Arabs from the Indians. 
from India went to two important work, namely the Brahma Stupa Siddhanta, better known as Sindhin, and Kandaka, they are known as Arkan. This book uh, reached Baghdad and widely known by the Arabs in their scientific field. So, generally, the Holy Quran is popularly believed to contain Arabic words alone. But apart from Persian, Syria, Coptic, and other words, it also included Sanskrit words. According to Suleiman Nadvi, at least four Sanskrit or Hindi words have been frequently used in Quran. Ambar, Mushak, Janjali, and Kafur. Certain scholars have pointed that the name of Buddha is also mentioned in the Quran as full Kifa or Kapil, belong to the Kapila Vastu, along with other prophets such as Moses, Abraham, and Jesus. The other Hindi words which are largely used in secular Arabic literature, Shandal, Chandan, Tanbul, Beetle, Karanful, Karnaful, Klau, Nirofer, Pulfil, or Pipali, or Pepper, like that. Buddhist influence on the Muslim instead during the Abbasid period. Their ministers were known as Barmuks or Barmikis. Originally, they were Buddhist and heads of the Navavihara Balak, which according to the Masalik I Absar, Malalik I Amsar of Al Humari was founded by an Indian king. The last Barmuk was brought up in India, received his education in Kashmir before he was appointed minister at the court of Baghdad, which had become the center of Hindu learning. The name of the city is of Indian origin for Bag or Sanskrit. Bag means God. Da in Sanskrit means to give. Baghdad. Hence, the Baghdad is the gift of God. It was found and built by the Khalifa Al Mansur in. 762 AD and was designed on a scientific basis with the help of Indian engineers and architects. It was one of the first Muslim cities which was circular in plain. Thus, India seems to have influenced the Arab town planning also. Buddhism had certainly influenced Arab religious thoughts as it stated above. Many Buddhist texts or Jatakas were translated into Arabic and Aswagosa's Buddha Charita was edited and modified by Arab writers. Thus, the legend of Sankyamuni Gautama Buddha entered into the religious thoughts of the Arabs. According to the Islamic tradition, Adam, the first man and prophet, descended on Indian soil from heaven and received here for the first divine message from God. The Muslim also believe that Adam's elder son, Sita, is lying buried at Ayodhya. Besides, we find many similarities in the religious practice of Arabia and India. The Islamic sizda or prostrations Ashram or garb or worship of during the Hajj, Tawaf, circumvalences of Kaaba have close resemblance of the mode of worship of Buddhism. It might have been one of the reasons why the Prophet said, from India from, comes from the divine fragments to me, unquote. The Chaitya archers may have been responsible for the development of mirrors of the early mosques. In so far as the religious part is concerned, India's contribution to the development of Muslim Mysticism is behind doubt. Nazam, Ahmad Fadal, Al Udaibi, and Amar bin Bakri Al Jaid introduced the ideas of beautiful vision of the goal of Hindu search for God. Work of Jais are influenced by the Indian thinkers and yogis. The celebrated Safi Mansuri Revolution Declaration, Analak, is by the merchant Suleiman, who made several quotations about the religious aspects of India. It is seen that from the 11th century onwards, a large number of Arab merchants, traders, and Arabic scholars visited South India. This is too brought its influence in the field of Sharia, education, language, literature of the region. The 18th century was the marked by a general social and cultural decline, both in India and the Arab world. It was the, during the period that the Indo-Arab trade too suffered a great setback because of the emergence of Portuguese as a sea power in Indian Ocean. During the 19th century, both India and the Arab world were more or less faced with the challenge of political aggression and enslavement by the West on one hand, the other social and digital background of their people. The leaders of the both Arab world and India were conscious of the causes of the backwardness of the people. And we see some of the great socio-religious reformists, 
movement launched during this period. The first of the present 20th century was marked by the massive struggle for independence. The main aim of the Indians and Arabs during the period was complete political independence. A new phase of Indian relations with the Arab world began with the dawn of And today, there is no closer collaboration between India and the Arab world in cultural, educational, and technical field. Bravo. Both side is 69. Please mute yourself. We have found more on commercial side. India. Mauti, madam, Only please uh, mute your uh, mic, madam, please. Because Indian industry is commercial commodity. Nearly India's 82 lakh Indian migrants are working in various countries of Arabia. So, so many cultural influences on Indians. Madhmavati, ma'am, please mute. Indians are very much work on the social and economic fields in the Arab countries. So, with this few remarks, I find my presentation. If you have any question, please ask me. It is my first presentation in this academic staff college. So, I thank you. One and all. Dear participants, do you have any queries about my presentation? Please clarify it. Sir, I have a question. Please. Sir, this is uh, the intellectual exchange between India and uh, Western Asia. Is it influenced on uh, Indian politics? Yes, definitely, sir. Because oh, sir. Uh, West Asia includes Persia also. We see in uh, Mughal courts, and Deccan Sultanate, so many adventures came from Persia and from Arabic, even Delhi Sultanate period. So many administrators, rulers from uh, Arabia only, you know. So even uh, in our present administration, so many words, Amildar, Shirasidar, Tasidar, like that, many words are included in our administrative setup. Even our uh, entire uh, administrative setup, so many things borrowed from the Arabian administrative setup because first time in Arabia. Yeah. Pardon? Please carry on, sir. You please carry on, sir. During the, please, during please the medieval there, period, on, during the medieval period uh, most part of the northern India ruled by the Arabs. So, uh, like that, even uh, during the 14th and 15th century, uh, most of the South India ruled by the Persian rulers, uh, like uh, uh, even Deccani Sultanate, Bamani, Sa, or even Golconda uh, Sultans, like that. So, that's why uh, administration in administ Indian administration, so many influential. Uh, things are happened during those periods. Uh, Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, you spoke. Uh, this is Dr. Mahadeo Swami, sir, from Gurdupet, Gurusudha, yes. sir. Yes. You spoke very well. And actually, with regarding to the influence of Persians on uh, uh, southern, particularly Deccani and uh, India, mm -hmm. from the point of actually many aspects we have that actually that interaction which was taken place in the medieval period and giving and uh, taking policy. For example, Sufism, it uh, enters, uh, enters into India 
and even actually the sufi cults were also uh, become uh, one of the strongest uh, faiths in south particularly in uh, dakni sultan period and as well as actually al masudi and other uh, writers actually they took many ideas from the astronomical ideas and even actually that uh, indian medicine as you said it is correct and even from the point of administration many administrative ideas were actually became a part and parcel of uh, the medieval uh, sultan's administration uh, even in mogal court and another important aspect in connection to this uh, uh, uh with with regarding to uh, urdu urdu which became a language of the uh, indian admins muslim admin but it was a mixture of uh, that persian arabic and actually the western uh, languages in fact actually it it, it, uh, it amalgamated uh, into the indian uh, situation uh, during the later stages yeah actually urdu is the origin uh, from india only India, a mixture but, of the persian arabic and hindi arabic. yeah hindi that's why some of the scholars called uh, urdu as a hindi yeah it is the indian language naturally it is a indian language moreover uh, what do you say sufism actually sir uh, sufism uh, not recognized by the arabs as a uh, religious thought because they are all uh, persian uh, persian thought it is uh, because it is persian as well as the, it is uh, pre islamic uh, uh, thought uh, sufism is a pre islamic thought Uh, during uh, 9th century onwards so many sufis were uh, came from central asia actually not too strong in arabia sufism developed in central asia and part of the uh, this one uh, asia only so uh, it is flourished in east asian states and india not in that much in uh, arabia sir because quran against the uh, sufism that's why uh, that's most sh- of the caliphs against the sufi uh, shias were against to the uh, su- the sunni sunni muslims were against to the shia cult yeah yeah, yeah. and that's actually why, the yeah, sufis yeah. belongs to shia uh, no, uh, faith actually not not fully sir actually fully. during the safavid period yeah. uh, some of the safavi kings sent out the all the sufis because they yeah. hated sufis are the heretics so that's why sufism uh, developed uh, in east asian states and as well as in india it is uh, uh, taken so many local uh, faiths and so uh, local practices incorporated in uh, sufi cults yeah right sir you are right sir can i uh, can we say sufi is a cult or sufi is a ideology sir namaste namaste please hello yes sir yes sir kelta idini sir what about painting artisans exchange between india and arab sir what about painting artisans exchange between arab and india sir actually during the mogal period i mean after the 14th and 15th century so many painters from persia not from arabia because in uh, orthodox uh, islam not encouraged to the paintings yes, that's why most of the painters came from the persia persia to india so previously uh, paintings introduced to the arab world from the byzantine byzantine artisans invited by the local rulers and the nobles to picturize in their uh, premises under inside the house or inside the palaces or harems so there is no encouragement in uh, arabia so most of the painters who came to india during the uh, moguls as well as later period from the persians only sir so many miniature paints for example 
it is very influential miniature paint from the persian model so, miniature so. paintings are very influential on indian paintings thank you so, uh, calligraphy another calligraphy another important uh, art introduced by the arabian and persian scholars in india instead of decorating with the live objects they decorated their buildings or doors or arches, or arches by making use of the uh, letters letters of arabic or persian letter use they use uh, these letters alphabets to decorate the arches and uh, domes like that you can see even for example even you can see the sridhar patana uh, gates also you can see the good number of calligraphical art in their architecture oh ಸರ್ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರ್ ವಸಂತ್ ಕುಮಾರ್ ಅಂತ ಸರ್ ನಮ್ಮ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಮ್ಯೂಸಿಕ್ ಮೇಲೆ ಅರಬ್ ಮ್ಯೂಸಿಕ್ ಬಹಳಷ್ಟು ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೂಯೆನ್ಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ತು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಬಟ್ ಅರಬ್ ಮ್ಯೂಸಿಯಂ ಮ್ಯೂಸಿಕ್ ಇಂತ ನಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಿಕಲ್ ಮ್ಯೂಸಿಕ್ ಬಹಳಷ್ಟು ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಆಗಿತ್ತಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ ಆದ್ರೆ ಗಜಲ್ಗಳು ಇವೆಲ್ಲ ಬಹಳಷ್ಟು ಉತ್ತರ ಭಾರತದಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರಾಮುಖ್ಯತೆಯನ್ನು ಪಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳುತ್ತೆ ಇದ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ಏನಾದ್ರು ಅರಬ್ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಬಹಳಷ್ಟು ಪ್ರಭಾವ ಬೀರುತ್ತಾ ಅಂತ ಬಹಳಷ್ಟು ಪ್ರಭಾವ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿಕ್ ಬರಲ್ಲ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿರ್ಬೋದು ಇವನ್ ಪ್ರೀ ಇಸ್ಲಾ ಪಿರಿಯಡ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇಸ್ಲಾಂ ಧರ್ಮ ಹುಟ್ಲಿಕ್ಕಿಂತ ಮೊದಲನೇ ಅರೇಬಿಯಾದಲ್ಲಿ ಅರೇಬಿಯಾದಲ್ಲಿ ಪೊಯಿಟ್ರಿ ಬಹಳ ಫೇಮಸ್ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಆ ಟ್ರೈಬಲಿಸಮ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಆ ಟ್ರೈಬಲ್ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಏನಿತ್ತು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಪೊಯಿಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪೊಯಿಟ್ರಿಗೆ ಬಹಳ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರು ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇವರು ಆ ಬುಡಕಟ್ಟು ಸಮುದಾಯಗಳ ಚರಿತ್ರೆಯನ್ನ ಅವರ ಹೆಗ್ಗಳಿಕೆಯನ್ನ ಬುಡಕಟ್ಟುಗಳ ಹೆಗ್ಗಳಿಕೆಯನ್ನ ಮುಂದಿನ ತಲೆಮಾರುಗಳಿಗೆ ತಲುಪಿಸ್ತಾರೆ ಅಂತ ಕಾರಣಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರವಾಗಿ the encourage the poets and poetry so during that period during the uh, full moon days they organized the cultural uh, feasts so avaginannu kuda arabic music ide arabic music our influence your influence anthe helikinta both namm mele arabic music influence ide global mele indian music influence kuda ide avurdu traditionally avaru kuda ondu enalli develop aag bandide namdu from ancient time namdu kuda ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಆಗಿ ಬಂದಿದೆ ಬಟ್ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಇಸ್ಲಾಮಿಕ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ತ್ರೀ ಫೋರ್ ಸೆಂಚುರೀಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗಿವ್ ಮೋರ್ ಪ್ರಾಮಿನೆನ್ಸ್ ಟು ದಿ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಕಲ್ಚರಲ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಅವ್ರ ಪೇಂಟಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಗಿರ್ಬೋದು ಮ್ಯೂಸಿಕ್ ಆಗಿರ್ಬೋದು ಡ್ಯಾನ್ಸ್ ಆಗಿರ್ಬೋದು ಆ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಸಿಕ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಅವ್ರದ್ದು ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಏನಿತ್ತು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಇವೆಲ್ಲವೂ ಕೂಡ ಮನುಷ್ಯನನ್ನ ಉನ್ಮಾದಕ್ಕೆ ಕರೆದುಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗ್ತವೆ ದಟ್ ಲೀಡ್ಸ್ ಟು ದಿ ಸಮ್ illicit uh, activities yeah, enclose maadutte these are all bad ana ondu concept iddadrinda first 3 4 centuries they are not give more prominence to the these art yes. i mean dance musics like that but even though in the previous pre islamic period poetry to even musical so very important components in their society thank you sir thank you uh, uh, sir namaste yes. ಸರ್ ಈಗ ಭಾರತದ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತಿ ಮತ್ತು ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಅನ್ನ ಪಾಶ್ಚಿಮಾತ್ಯ ಜಗತ್ತಿಗೆ ಪರಿಚಯಿಸಿದವರು ಅರಬ್ಬರ ಅಥವಾ ಅದಕ್ಕಿಂತ ಮುಂಚೆ ಯಾರಾದ್ರೂ ಪರಿಚಯಿಸ